study the word of God, and we're praying, Lord, that you would allow us not just to be hearers of the word, but to be doers, and we're praying that you would give, Lord God, us the right instructions, so that we can put into action, Lord, what you have prepared for us in these last hours. We thank you for allowing us to shine as a church who bears your name. We pray anointing, Lord, and strength in the precious and the holy name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome everyone to our first adult Bible study of the month of March. The title that I'm going to be teaching out of, I'm going to ask that not only would you note it as a title, but today if, if you want to take some notes, I always say if you want to, if you maybe don't have the resources to, to jot something down, just take it. But I'm going to try to take my time and just let the Lord use me as this Bible study goes forth. And again, we want to thank God for all the saints of God and every visiting friend that is here today. To all our online audience, God bless you. Your belief affects your behavior. Your belief affects your behavior. Or maybe I could say it um, this way. What you believe God to be, dig how you live your life. Whatever you believe God to be dictates how you live your life. Understanding that God is one and stands alone gives us a singular focus and clarity as we fight against many distractions in this life. So we see, as we see God as one, it allows us to have that focus. Again, the title is what we believe God to be, or the title, the theme is what we believe God to be, um, dictates how we live our life. If we recognize him as a spirit, puts our confidence in one who lives above and cannot be tainted, soiled, or turned by the things of this world. I'm talking about who God is. Knowing that he is love will compel a tenderness in us, even in times of heated opposition. So I've talked about him as being one, about him as being a spirit, about him as being love. Seeing him as a forgiver will allow us to pardon those who meant evil against us but God has turned it for the good. When you see him in this light, it'll allow you to react in a way that is contrary to your carnal nature. Can somebody say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Believing that he is a good parent will help us as he chastens us in love for our betterment. Identifying him as a holy God gives us confidence or a confidence that through his spirit, he's given us the power to become more like him. Also, realizing that he is a consuming fire encourages us to have a reverence for him and to walk circumspect because of the penalty associated with rebellion. Again, your belief affects your behavior. As you know him to be one, hero Israel, the Lord of God is one God, it gives us the focus that we need with all the distractions that we have in this uh, present life. And understanding that he is love, he's a forgiver, he's a good parent, he's a holy God, he's a consuming fire. When you see God in these lights or in this perspective, then it prompts us, it compels us, it helps us to become what God has intended for us. And I will say that a proper perception of God is paramount. I'm going to say that again. A proper perception of God is paramount. The nature of God is made known through the Holy Scriptures by the freely given Holy Ghost. His words are illuminated, they're activated, causing us to know Him intellectually and experientially as well. So you may ask, well, how is it 
you're talking about knowing God. You're talking about understanding him for who he is. Um, the way that we get to know who God is simply is through the scriptures. And we're so thankful that the base is the Holy Scriptures. Everything that's preached out of here is confirmed through the Scriptures. It's preached through the Scriptures. We honor the Word of God above everything else here. And as we honor the Word of God, the Spirit, the Spirit steps in and empowers us as we read it, as we believe it, as we have faith in it. It gives us the strength to walk it out. And it allows us to understand who He is. Without the Holy Scriptures, we can't know who God is. God has defined himself through the scriptures. And in order to, to be in alignment with God, we have to make sure that, one, we're reading the scriptures, we're honoring the word of God. We're not just uh, uh, living off either our parents' uh, uh, experience, their faith, or somebody else's, your husband's, your wife's. But you have a walk with God to the point that you are reading the scriptures and you are reading the scriptures to the point that it begins to paint a picture of who God is so, so we can have the right perspective of God so then we can live correctly how we need to live. Can somebody say amen? amen. So as we talk about the nature of God, you've heard this many times, but I'm going to go through it again, that God is, and I have a, a slide here to show it to you, God is omniscient. Some of you have heard this term, omnipresent and omnipotent. We talk about God, the nature of God. We look at his nature, we realize that omniscient means all-knowing. That means that there's nothing that God does not know. And we have to sometimes stop and just think about that for a minute. There's absolutely nothing that our God doesn't know. Nothing. Nothing. We can, there's nothing that we could understand that God doesn't, that we could know that God doesn't. He's omnipresent, which means he's all present. We could not escape his presence. We couldn't get away from him. He is at every place all the time. He, he is omnipresent. And as we look at our God and realize that he's all-knowing, he's all-present, and then we also know that he is omnipotent, which means he is all-powerful. If we look at this, there's nothing that he does not know. There's not a place that he cannot be. There's not a, a, a strength that, that can challenge how powerful he is. We serve an amazing God. I said we serve an amazing God. We just need to take a, a, a second and stop and think about the God of the Bible. This is what the Bible represents God to be. When we have a clear understanding of who he really is, words cannot describe his magnificence. Now, if we just were to stop right there and just, just understand that God is all-powerful, he's all-present, he's all-knowing, that in itself is just mind-blowing. That in itself would cause us to praise him, worship him, bow down, revere, honor him, love him, because there is nobody or nothing greater than God. I said there's nothing greater than God. Amen. As, as we look at uh, the nature of God, we have to look at this word, which is sovereign. Our God is sovereign. And a sovereign is a supreme ruler, one possessing ultimate power. We can look at that concept in Romans 9 and 20 and 21. The scripture reads, actually I should not go so fast because I'm sure some of you are taking notes, that again, a sovereign is a supreme ruler. One, possessing ultimate power. Again, when we get a proper perspective of God, it really can alter our lives. It really can unleash what God has potential, given us potential for, so that we can walk in his authority. Romans 9 and 20. Nay, but O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Verse 21, Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another to unto dishonor? If you just look at this and, and think about 
how amazing our God is, we realize this, that he formed us, he created us. And sometimes our attitude is questioning God. Sometimes our, our attitudes are doubting God or we don't understand his will, but many times we have to realize that we're simply the clay, he's the potter. And he's molding our life, he's shaping in our life, he's, he's uh, and, and into things that we struggle with, but most importantly into things that are beautifying us. The process may be challenging, and if you, you know, you know anything about pottery, it goes through a crazy process through, through the hands of, of the potter itself, and then it goes into the fire, into the kiln, and it's made harder, and it goes through, the, through this uh, process that, that makes it a vessel that is to be used for the good. And I believe in our lives, you know, uh, the thoughts that God has for us are thoughts uh, to bless us, to help us. Uh, they're good thoughts to to put us in a place of, of, of uh, promotion and to be used in his kingdom, it's not to destroy us. And as God is molding us and making us, we have to realize we're just the clay. You know, I know it's hard for you parents when your children get real smart with you, get real cute with you. You're like, don't you understand? I'm the parent here. Uh, you don't talk to mama that way. You don't talk to daddy that way. Because you understand there's a relationship, there's a role, there's a, a level of respect. And in this case, we understand that God is the potter and we're the clay. Sometimes when we don't like uh, or understand his will, the way things are going in our life, we have to get the proper perspective to help us. That we are simply the clay, we, we've got to get through this test, we've got to get through this trial, and in Jesus' name we will. Proverbs 16 to 9 says, and we're, we're right now speaking of how God is a, a sovereign. God has, uh, possesses ultimate power. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directs his steps. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directs his steps. It's a wonderful passage. I do have a quote that I, I have to apologize. I don't know where I got it from. I have so many notes that sometimes I just forget wh where, where I got this from. When it's me, I won't say anything typically. It's just me writing. But when it's somebody else, I try to give them the credit. But uh, it says, creatures are not entitled to register complaints about their creator. Creatures are not entitled to register complaints about their creator. In the same vein, in Isaiah 55 and 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. And that speaks to us right there. <laughs> For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Sometimes we get a little prideful, a little haughty, um, we get a little puffed up, and there are times when we challenge God, we question him in a way where, God, I don't understand the season that I'm going through, or I don't understand why, you know, this person has this blessing and I don't have it, or, you, you know, we, we either can compare or we can, you know, struggle and not understand God's will, but when, when we get the proper perspective and realize he's the potter, we're the clay, that his thoughts are so much higher than ours, and, and sometimes we just need like a perspective refresh in God. We get so, you know, entrenched in our lives that I believe many times we forget that God is as powerful and as amazing as he is. And sometimes we forget it. I think my perspective of God, how amazing he is, compels me that regardless of what's happening in my life, he deserves my best. Praise, worship faithfulness, because I see God as faithful, it compels me to be faithful. Because I see him as wonderful, it compels me to change whatever is in my life through the power of the Holy Ghost and his grace to become better, to study the word of God so, so that I, as I see my God, my holy God, it, it draws me to a place to be more like him. And when, when life, you know... Uh, you know, gives you lemonade, lemon, excuse me, or, you know, uh, you know, we know how the saying goes, and, and we don't know how to handle it. We do have to make the best out of that situation. That's why it's so important, 
and I stress this every Bible study, that regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what season you find yourself in, you always have to give God praise and give God the glory. Because he's a sovereign God. He is a wonderful God. We should always at least lift our hands or clap our hands or magnify him and say, God, I give you full authority of my life because I know who you are and I know who I am. And you deserve everything. That perspective will help you so much. You know, it, it, it'll give you the strength when you feel like you don't have the ability to praise him or to worship him. And, and I'll tell you through your darkest trials and, and times, just lifting your hands and saying, Lord, I love you. I thank you. I magnify you. I praise you. It changes everything because you're acknowledging his sovereignty. You're acknowledging his omnipotence, omniscience. You're, you're acknowledging how wonderful God is in your puny little world. Yeah, sometimes we think so much of our universe. And really, in comparison to him, we are nothing. But it's amazing that he sent his son to the cross to lay down his life for us so that we can have life and we can have it more abundantly. And when we understand that, my God, we're so thankful. We're so thankful that we get an opportunity to serve him and to love him. I want you to take this note. His sovereignty is my security. Understanding his sovereignty should cause us to be more secure in who he is. He can't be, he can't be changed. He, he can't be moved by what's happening in the world. Uh, a global threat of annihilation doesn't phase him. It, the, the things, catastrophic things happening in the world, it's nothing to him as far as changing who he is. And, and we have to understand that because of who he is, as the song says, because of who he is, we can face tomorrow. Not, not, not because of how strong we are or, or what we've been able to accomplish or what we can do, but because of who he is. When you get a glimpse of who God really is, my God. I, I just, just today I said, God, give me the ability, the best that I can with words, to express how amazing you are. To remind the people of God that we serve a God that is powerful, wonderful, he's merciful, he's kind, he's also, uh, he's a consuming fire. We, and we, when we understand the balance and, and, and the, the composition of who he is uh, that the scriptures define, man, it just touches our mind. It, it, it's just so exciting that God would give us a lifetime of being able to serve him. You know, when you understand God for who he is, it'll cause you to be faithful. And when, when people give up on God and people walk away from God, God will give you the strength. Why? Because you have a perspective of who he is. My God's a faithful God. And because he's faithful, he's going to allow me to not veer to the left or the, to the right, but to keep moving forward, to keep trusting him, to keep magnifying him. And in that, God gives us a strength for every season. And he allows us to, to be uh, prosperous even in uh, even the winter seasons, if you want to call it that. I'm so thankful for God and so thankful for his blessings. Can somebody just say, thank you, Jesus? In Matthew 20 and 1, there is the parable of the labors and the vineyard. I'm going to summarize this account. This landowner hired laborers to work in his vineyard, and he hired them at daybreak, some at daybreak, some at around 9 o'clock, some around 3 o'clock p.m., and some at around 5 o'clock p.m. And again, he hired a group that started at daybreak at around 9 o'clock a.m., around 3 o'clock p.m., and around 5 o'clock p.m. They all at different times agreed to work for a day's wage. Those who worked from the morning... When they got their payment, they uh, felt that their wages should be greater than the latecomers. I'm preaching to somebody right now. <laughs> the word is, the owner rebukes the complainers and lets them know, this is my field. I do as I please. And if I choose to treat the last that showed up as good as the first, isn't that my call? That's what he said. 
This speaks of God's sovereignty and our humanity. Our humanity wants a higher wage for our supposed lengthier work. So the perspective that we can get from this is we can't live for God under earthly rules and measures. Or we can't perceive God according to our scale or according to or through our lens. First, his sovereignty must rule over our expected sense of judgment. The householder allowed all four parties to work. The opportunity was given to all of the workers. Some worked harder and some worked longer than others. His payment was the same even though some of their investment wasn't. But his kingdom is not about equal investment or it's not about equal balanced work. The focus should be the opportunity to be thankful for a chance to fulfill a day's wage. When you expect God to judge from the carnal perspective, or from the, excuse me, the perspective of a carnal man or an earthly situation, you miss the essence, the godly spiritual principles that we need. I don't know if in your area of the neighborhood you have this problem, but down Power Road as I get to work and pretty much everywhere else I need to go, there has been, it seems like, a couple years of construction. And every couple of lanes converge into one at the, you know, obviously the most difficult times. I'm that guy where as they're converging, I stay in the lane that everything should be in, right? And that lane starts backing up. But then there are those young teenage girls or whoever they may be who feel like they're going to cut in the other lane and just expect somebody to let them in last minute. My sense of justice <laughs> jumps out and wants to cut them off. My wife's saying, "Hun, no, don't worry about it. It's okay. You don't need... No, they, everybody's waiting in this line. They can wait. They can wait either behind, and if they try to cheat, I'm going to cut them off. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> It's when you wish you had a big Hummer or a big diesel. You can just take up the whole road. They can't bother you. But it's this sense of judgment sometimes that will get you more in trouble than anything else. I mean, literally, how much more time is it going to take? And I'm saying this knowing that my wife's going to preach this to me the next time that we're having a traffic alteration. But it's an example of many times our sense of judgment is just a mess sometimes. You know, it's like, hey, just stay in the right lane, take your place. But some people just have no, you know, sense of, uh, of respect for anything, you know. And we can look at a situation like this and realize that a lot of times our sense of judgment can get us in trouble. Even though it's the right thing. And, you know, in this case, there was those workers that worked all the day. Everybody got paid the same and they were upset. And, and, and they just said, listen... We worked harder, we, we dealt with the, the heat of the day through the sun, and, uh, you know, we're more tired, and they showed up five minutes, or, or at five o'clock, and they didn't have very much time to work, but in the vineyard, they didn't work like we did. And a lot of times in life, I believe there's a huge lesson that we have to get, that we have to understand that as we deal with God as the potter, God is sovereign, God is, you know, a king, judge, ruler, as we deal with God, we have to realize that Life isn't fair. It's not fair that some people can sing beautiful and some people just don't have any tone at all. Some people are tall and some people are short. Some people are very attractive and some people aren't. And, and sometimes we look at God and say, it's not fair. Some people work hard and they don't get paid very much. Or some people hardly work and they have an inheritance that just, you know, takes care of them. And it's not fair. And as we look at all these supposed injustices or things that are, you know, out of line... Sometimes we can allow whatever situation gets you. You have to remain uh, uh, in perspective of who God is. That regardless of somebody having more or less, 
That's not the point. You know, maybe somebody's promoted. Somebody is, uh, you know, blessed in a certain way. We have to understand that the bottom line is we're all just working to see Jesus one day. And even though some may be have a, a platform, you know, in this life, or some may, some may be, have, a, excuse me, some kind of elevation, promotion, gift, something that you don't have money or a great job or whatever it is materially, we have to understand that we have to look at God as sovereign and realize, you know, it's, it's not my job to go to God and complain about what's not fair. You know, this person treated me a certain way, so now I'm going to react in this manner. Or, you know, I don't like this person's attitude. The, the bottom line is that we have to understand that God is sovereign. He's our father. He's our dad. And we just have to have a level of respect and an honor towards him and even the things that he allows. And, you know, a lot of times it's those things that we can't control. You know, we all have those things that just get under our skin and we have no say in the matter and, and, and we just, it's just so unfair, God, you know. And we'll be honest with God and tell him, but we have to understand that it's not a thing about justice, it's not a thing about equity, it's about focusing on God. You know what? I, I shouldn't even have been invited to, to, to work in the vineyard. But you know what? I have the ability to get paid what I need for this day. And the same thing for our spiritual life. We, you know, God didn't have to call me. And, and I'm so thankful that he called me. And I want to take advantage of every opportunity I can to praise him, to worship him, to magnify him, to lift him up. Because even when things are fair, unfair down here, it is fair that he loves me that he has called me, that he has redeemed me, and that he has given me an opportunity regardless of what the circumstances are. And being able to see God in that light, you know, it really helps us. And, and I'm going to tell you, when you serve God for some time, <laughs> that sometimes is the most challenging place because you feel like, oh, you know, I, I've done my dirt. And uh, it causes that person, myself included, to, we have to be careful. That because we have served him for some time, we expect certain things. But we have to realize, God, you're sovereign. You know, you are, you are, it, 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 is, it is according to your will. And the things that we can't change, we have to trust him. And we have to have a level of grace, as Bishop was so wonderfully teaching the last uh, couple of weeks on charity and, and the gifts of the spirit and these things. We're so thankful that we have this type of teaching and this type of instruction. But... If somebody is gifted in one way that we're not, we have to rejoice with them. Amen. And we just have to say, God, I'm thankful that you allow me to desire certain gifts and abilities and, 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 and things in you. And in that, I'm going to be thankful. And in that, I'm going to praise you. Can somebody say amen? amen. Romans 1 and 19, I want us to go through that. We're going to read down to the 32nd verse. or so we're going to have a little lengthy reading here. Romans 1 and 19. Again, we are talking about a focus on understanding really who the Lord is and having a proper perspective of him. Romans 1 and 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Verse 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Think about that for a minute. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves." who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who was blessed forever, amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, 
burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventor of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, that one jumped out at me today, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. In the beginning of the book of Romans, the apostle Paul addresses those who this is the, the, the focus here, who changed the splendor or the glory of God into idols that represented corrupted man, creatures such as reptiles and the fowl of the air. In doing so, a perversion fell on them that changed their natural design so that they would dishonor their own bodies in a vile manner. I want you to take this note. When you try to change his nature, or you don't see him correctly, yours is altered in the rebellion. Your created purpose is disabled. I don't think I have to be very clear on that one. I think you can figure out what that means. See, when we don't see him the way we're supposed to, something happens to us. All these works of the flesh that are mentioned here starts falling upon us because we don't have a proper perspective of who he is. But if you see him as holy, as pure, as innocent, if you see God as beautiful, as loving, then when you see him as that, and if God allows you to see him by faith as that, that's who you become through his grace, through his power, through his spirit. And this is what we need to have. But the scripture tells us that they, they change the glory of God into a creature, to, to, to that which is created like humans and reptiles and creatures of this earth. And they made idols like that. And, and they, they basically said, this is, is our representation and our understanding of God. This is our perspective of God, perception of God. And we have to understand that uh, I, I really feel what God wants us to understand this evening is if you see God as unfaithful, that's probably what, what you're going to practice, unfaithfulness. If you see God as inactive or lazy, then that's what you're going to practice spiritually in your life. If you see God as, you know, uh, not really looking at all situations or being like that parent that, that, you know, sees everybody else's kids' problems, but they don't see their own kids. You know how we have those mafioso families, especially in Mexican culture. <laughs> you know, you know, you just you, the 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 authorities. You know, they don't mean nothing, but it's just you know that that blood is thicker than anything. You know, and you take care of your family. But you know, a lot of times our our children are raised up in an environment where if mama and daddy are always lying or or, or you know living a certain kind of way, that's the way that we are raised. That's the way we start acting. Because we see our authority figures as such. So that when we, as we grow in life, we think, well, I, I've seen this my whole life, so I'm going to be like this. But we have to understand that he is our father. He is our sovereign. He is our God. He is our king. He is our judge. He is our ruler. And even when nobody's looking, he's looking. And, and when we have that perspective of God that, you know, when, when nobody's there and you're on your phone, like, God's looking. He sees what I'm seeing. You know, maybe nobody else can see what's going on, but God sees. We have to be careful. And when we see God, is that he's all present. He's, you know, I can't hide from God. I can't hide my sins from God. And when we have this perspective of God and we understand, God, I see you as a faithful God. I see you as a wonderful God. Then it changes our behavior. 
But to get to that point where we see him as such, it takes humbling yourself in prayer. It takes repentance. It, it, it takes meditation. It takes the word of God. And it takes the spirit of God to authorize what you've read and to give you that power and authority to be like him. That's why we must be born again of the water and of the spirit. Because it's according to scripture. It's covenant that we have with God. Once we're born again, that God gives us the strength, the, the ability to become the sons of God. And in that, after we've gone through that process, then we have to daily walk and we have to make sure that perspective is not tainted. That perspective is, is not altered and we have to see him. And when you see him in that light, it, it's going to convict the, the parts in your life that are getting in the way of the will of God for your life. You know, there's so many things that we need to work on, and we live in such a wicked and perverse world that we have to make sure that our focus is on him. You know, as we tell you sometimes, you're going to have difficulties inside the, in the house of God. You're going to have challenges in the house of God, but that shouldn't change your perspective of God. You know, uh, early on in, in Bishop and, and Elect Ladies Ministry, they had a, a man of God that failed them, you know, that failed God and, and literally... Uh, you know, disrespected the, the office that he held by, by being extremely immoral. But it didn't cause them to go away and quit and say, you know what? If the man of God did it, then that means there's no hope for me. No, they love God. When they got in it, they said, I'm going to serve you with everything. And uh, every challenge that I've seen them go through in life, they just continue to move forward. Why? Because their focus was on God. Not an organization, not a person, not a man. But it was God. Give us the strength to move forward. And when man will fail you, God won't. You know, and God will allow situations to test you and to see, well, how are you going to see me in this situation? How are you going to see me in this light? Your best friend may turn on you. Your husband or wife may give you problems. But, but how do you see me? I feel God is asking us. You know, uh, your health may fail you. Your, your finances, you, you, know, all, you know, sometimes even your mind starts slipping a little bit. But God, I need to hold on to your uh, sobriety, Jesus. I need you to balance me. I need you to strengthen me because in you is uh, all of our trust. Can somebody say amen? amen? And when we see him properly, we respond with praise and thanksgiving, giving him the glory due to his name. When you really understand who he is, It'll put a jump in you. It'll put a march in you, a shout in you. When you understand that, man, that wasn't too long ago, a couple of decades ago, we were, you know, in a rough split pace. Uh, mom and dad, they, you know, they were not serving God, and it was just a party. But then Jesus got a hold of their life, changed them, transformed them. Now we have a, a beautiful church here in the suburbs of Gilbert giving God praise. Why? Because God changed our lives and we had a perspective change and we saw God for who he was. And I'm thankful that his spirit is in this place and I'm thankful that God has kept us as a body. We may not be extremely large in size, but I believe we're extremely powerful. As Gideon's army, God's going to give us the ability to put the enemy to flight. It was only 300 that they had that put thousands of the enemy to flight. It's not in numbers, but it's, you know, it's in being obedient to God. It's in serving God. It's in him. Again, when you get a right perspective of God, it will cause you to serve him different. The question, since God is all of the omnis and God is sovereign, what choice, what role or responsibility do we have in light of it? And I believe that in closing, towards the end here, we have two factors to look at. We have divine sovereignty, his, his sovereign power, and then we have human responsibility. And all we can do is respond to his glory. And when you truly understand that he has put you in his vineyard, when you truly understand that you are the clay and that he's the potter, and when you understand that he truly is God in control, our job is to respond to his glory, to respond 
to his wonderful nature, to who he is, and, and to, to have faith in the fact that, Lord, what you say, according to the scriptures, that's what I'm going to do. To respond by faith to how wonderful he is, 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 is our life's responsibility. That's why we walk in faithfulness. That's, I mean, I mean, think, think about this for a minute. And, and sometimes it's, it's so hard to just, you know, take a Selah moment and, and meditate. But if we were to stop and think about how amazing he is, and, and sometimes how that conflicts with how silly we can be about our time. You know, I, I need to, you know, get my sleep and I need it for my job, my career, my academics, my life. And so much, really this stuff doesn't matter in light of eternity. And we respect all those things and we honor those things, but not at the expense of putting God first. God, you're the creator of heaven and earth. The least that I can do is get up in the morning and think about you. The least that I can do is make it to the house of God. The least that I can do is give myself to serve in your kingdom. Let me ask you, let me ask you the question this way. What is more important than walking in the understanding that God is sovereign? Is your life that much more important than God's will? I mean, is your, you know, plans for your, for, for your job, you know, uh, for, to, you know, get you a nicer house, cars, or for your family to be established in a certain way, is that more important than understanding God and his sovereignty, his power? I, I, when I really think about this, it's, it's such a heavy concept for me that it blows my mind that God has given us an opportunity to serve, to sacrifice, and to endure certain things for his name in light of who he is. You know, if nothing else, understand this. Just look into who he is. Stop looking at your circumstances. Stop looking at who got paid more, who gets promoted more, who gets more attention, or, you know, all the, the you know, relational issues that we have. And if we think to his goodness and to his mercy and to his grace, it'll change our lives. It'll cause us to, you know, maybe uh, not let the sun go down on our wrath as much, you know. <laughs> it, it'll cause us to, to stay in that lane and let the traffic go and wait your turn a little more. <laughs> Amen. We're, all, we're all learning at different speeds and paces. But, but God is wonderful in that he has allowed us. He has allowed us. He's invited us into to his abode and, and to his church. And, and that is it's just amazing. And I'm thankful that... You know, we get a moment, we get one night on Friday, or, or one night on Wednesday uh, of the week to just meditate on, you know, the teaching of the biblical principles here, and it's a blessing. This is how we live our lives, according to these precepts, according to these statutes, according to these ordinances, these laws that God has given us. We love Him, and we love what He's instructed us to do, because as we walk in obedience to these things, and we as we you know, strive to please him, we see him more and more clear every day, and we get a per better perspective of who he is, and it changes our life. You know, you, you can go through uh, cancer in the family or personally. You can go through the loss of a loved one. You can go through these things knowing that he's omnipotent. He's everything, and I can get through this, and it's not just about what I'm going through. It's about understanding that I've been placed on this earth to understand who he is. Above everything else, to understand who he is and to respond by faith, by repentance, by baptism in Jesus' name, by the influence of the Holy Ghost, by walking a holy life. This is the gospel, and he has allowed us to see it, to understand it. And in that, God is going to cause us to be so blessed. Why don't we stand and thank the Lord as we clap our hands. A two for one, clapping and standing. There's a quote that's uh, somewhat associated with this, and I, and I put it in my notes last, and it's uh, by Steve Hall, and it says, the truest form of love is how you behave towards somebody, not how you feel about them. Amen. How you behave towards them, not how you feel. Your belief affects your behavior. And when you believe right, you start acting right. And we're so thankful that we have this opportunity to serve him. And, you know, I will say this. I am so, so thankful for the great team that we have here at Morningstar. Uh, 
the body of believers that are workers and, and they're sold out, that even on the technical staff allow people to be at home. And when you've been sick, we have a great staff that allows uh, the stream to happen so that you can catch what's happening at home. And I want to thank God for all the technical staff, all the greeters, the ushers, all the teachers, all the volunteers, all the ministers. There is great faith in them, and I'm so thankful. Um, I don't know what announcements we have. I could just go through them really quick. You want to come up, Bishop? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. I just got a, a quick uh, reminder. We're, we're coming to what is called the end of the uh, the uh, the year in the Hebrew calendar, Adar, and uh, the festival of Purim takes place there. Uh, the story of Purim is God behind the scenes working deliverance for the people of God for the Jewish nation. And in our experience at Morningstar, we've seen uh, two really unique things happen uh, in, in the 90s and then in 2003, I believe it was. And that is, there was a war that took place and ended on Purim there in, in, in the Middle East. And then there's a war that began on Purim at that time. So it seems to have like a time stamp and we're living, we're going to be entering to that month. We are also finally finishing up the 200 year, 120th year concerning, uh, concerning a period of time like in the day, as it was in the days of Noah. So there's a lot of things that are happening. And so when you put these things that happen in the scriptures, and then you see what's happening uh, with the move of Russia right now, and uh, everyone talking, the beginning to talk of, about a nuclear war. I don't want Morningstar to be asleep. I don't want Morningstar to be uh, passive about it. You must maintain a spiritual vigilance. Amen. We must maintain because uh, there will be a lot of turmoil in the future. Things are not going to get, things are not getting better. We have had the pandemic. We've had all sorts of crazy stuff happen. The governments are trying, are trying to make a one world government. God doesn't allow them apparently until we're still, since we're still here. The beast system is not going to be implemented while the church is here. But you're seeing everything going faster and faster, closer and closer to that moment where, where God will, will get, call up a church. And you must be ready. You must be ready. Amen. You're not going to go to in the rapture just because you have good days right. and you're good sometimes. All right? You're going to only go to heaven when you are righteous in the Lord and you love God's people. You don't take advantage of God's people. You, you honor God just the way the preacher was saying today. This is what you do. It's why what you do, it is not how you feel toward. You might feel all loving, loving toward God, but it's what you do toward him. Right. Amen. So it's powerful teaching. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. We're thankful for that. But the Lord gave us signs and seasons. And so we are looking as a pastor. I, or as a, as a bishop, I'm trying to continue to tell you, stay aware, stay awake, stay vigilant, have a prayer life. If you don't have one, build a prayer life. Amen. Amen. Pray it one more minute. Pray one more minute every day, and you'll be praying all day. But no, pray <laughs> up your time every week, at least a few more moments, and God's going to bless your life. Do we have any more announcements? All right, Sister Amy. Sorry, if you're not a Wednesday school parent, you're dismissed at this time. If you are a Wednesday school parent, we're going to ask you to move to the center pews and scoot forward real close. Nobody's sick. They won't cough on you, I promise. Just get real close to one another in these center pews, and then you may be seated. And then kiddos, you can...